guys, welcome to this exam technique video blog. My name is Candice Nobrega and I'm the auditing lecturer at CA Campus. This isn't auditing based, this is exam technique for any of your subjects. Okay, so basically I've just got some admin around it, the fact that you are going to have 30% of your total marks as reading time. So if it's out of 100 times by 30%, you've got 30 minutes reading time. Your writing time is the total marks times by 1.5. This means you can work out your writing time for each question, which is going to be important in terms of getting through all of your questions. Okay, you have a certain amount of time. If you stick to that, you will get through to all of the questions if you don't stick to that which is what often happens you don't get to half of the questions because you spend so much time trying to get points for a question which you may already have maximum points for so in terms of our technique what we need to do when we get to the question we start with reading time in your tests and exams they will give you the scenario without the required to make sure you only read so this time is hugely important, guys. You've got 30% of the total marks in terms of time for this. Lots of information needs to be taken in, but you can't just take it all in and think it's going to be retained. You have to come up with your own little shorthand notes that will help you to point out the very important information as you read it. How do you know what's very important? The more questions you do where you actually use the reading time, the better you will get at identifying important information. So, when reading, make shorthand notes, make comments as you go line by line. Don't go and write paragraphs. Don't think you've got the answer when you don't even know what the required is. So you can't get distracted in making these notes you need to continue reading and have shorthand notes. So what I mean by shorthand, okay, an auditing example. If I see there's a risk at the financial statement level because of this information, I would just make a note here, financial statement level risk. So that's a shorthand comment. I might want to expand a little, listed, and then move on. So that I can pick it up, not just see there's a risk here, I know what type of risk when I need to get to my required. But I don't go off and write down the whole risk because maybe there aren't going to be testing risks. So I've just got a second of my time used by making a shorthand note. Don't highlight guys because your paper will look a whole different color and you won't know what is important or not or why it's important. Whereas a little comment like this, I already know exactly what happened in that paragraph or line. Stop reading when your time is up because you now have the opportunity to get to your required so you want to get to the required to see what you should be looking at. So when you get to the required, read all of the required. Don't sit and analyze each, just read them all quickly so you know what is going to be tested in this paper. And then take your calculator and calculate the time. Remember, it was your marks times 1.5 and rank your questions. Out of, if there's five questions, go from one to five, what is your most favorite to least favorite question here? They have to be, guys. They've got to be questions you're more familiar with than questions that you aren't, so rank it. And that is how you should start Start with the things you ranked one, two, three, four, and finish your paper with the question you ranked last because you were not too comfortable with that. Okay, there's very good reasons behind that, guys. It means you're gaining confidence because you're starting with the questions you're most comfortable with. It's likely that if you find you're comfortable with that question, it's because you picked up information in the reading time, so you might not even need all the time for that required because you've already got a lot of the answers from the reading time. It also gives your brain some time to start to try and figure out the answers to those questions that were ranked last because your brain carries on working even though you're doing something else. 
Now that I'm done with my required analysis, I'm ready to start answering. So I'm going to start with the first ranked question. I make it very clear, I'm starting with question five. So the marker knows you aren't starting with one. Okay, it's very obvious to number your questions, but sometimes we forget and so it's important to do so. Then, I start with the notes I made in the reading time. Those are almost free marks because I'm not using time to go and find the answer. I already found the notes. I already made notes. So I start, I put those down so I get those marks. And then if I have more time, I can go and look for additional. But you will find that for a lot of the, the questions, you've actually got a lot of the answers from making the notes in the reading time. And very important, stick to your time. Move on, even if you have more to write, even if it's points from the reading time. Move on, and at the end, when you get to the last question, and you've given your brain the entire paper to try and figure out some answers for this, and you still don't have the answers, you can go back and add the answers to the questions you left off because you didn't have time. Okay, the point is that you might get to the last question and actually know everything, and then you're going to get all the marks you need for it. Whereas if you continuously go over in your different questions, there will be multiple questions you don't get to, which you potentially could have done really well in. Okay, so that's why it's very important to rank and then to stick to time to give yourself the opportunity to get to all of the questions that you might have thought you didn't know the answer to when you actually do. Okay, then, this is now only for your tutorials that you do at home um, or analyzing your test results. So this isn't during a test or an exam because this is when you need to have a mark plan. So when you need to mark, this is very important guys, you need to audit where you go wrong. Why? Because you need to learn from that. And then take the learning points into the next question because you'll find there's only so many ways we can test risk at the financial statement level. So if you got things wrong and you learn from that, the next time it's tested, you're going to get things right. You must learn. It's not about just going, I got it wrong and I move on. I need to understand why did I get it wrong. Did I get things wrong because I don't know the theory? I need to go back to my theory. Did I get it wrong? because I didn't actually get to the question because I didn't have time and I actually would have got everything right. So then it's my exam technique and time management. Did I get it wrong because I misinterpreted the required? Okay, do I understand why I misinterpreted and moving forward how I should interpret? So a lot of things to consider here. Give yourself a mark so that you can start to see improvements when you go forward, but also it shows you where you currently are sitting. A lot of you guys might think, oh no, I'm doing really well here, when in fact you aren't, or I'm doing really badly when in fact you aren't either. Okay, so it's important to give yourself the mark, you can start to track your progress, and you know if you need to be spending more time on a topic or not. And then after that, make a summary of learning points. This is how you show that you are learning because you say, what did I learn from this question? Was it my technique? Did I learn theory points that I now need to make sure I carry through? Did I learn that a point in the scenario like this brings about this answer, which I never knew before? Because I put that down and then when I see that in a scenario at a later stage, I will automatically remember this connection it had. Okay, so always have a summary of learning points. And guys, this is what you use before your tests or exams in terms of revising. Just work through those learning points. Yes, I do remember that. That sticks. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Because that's what you learned from each question. It's not necessary to go and redo questions. Because often you just remember the solution. It's important that you understood what you learned. And that's why when you make your summary, it would be from you. And so therefore it should show that you do have learned, you understand things. So I often find that you guys 
don't quite understand what I mean here. And so I've got a little quick example as to show you how you could go about it. So let's quickly work through this so I can practically show you what, I'm t what I mean. So I'm prepping for CTA, a course that is going to push me to my limits. In order to be ready, I need to get the following stationery. 2 USB, 17 highlighters, 31 pens, 8 files, 3 calculators, 10 pencils, 7 erasers, 15 A4 writing pads, 5 rulers, 59 gigs of data. My required. Identify all the prime numbers included in the stationery list for 7 marks. So, I've put together a solution. This was my attempt, okay? So, I've said 7 erasers, 3 calculators, 5 rulers, 15 writing pads and 17 highlighters. That's my solution. Now I need to mark it. So I go to the actual solution. And the first thing I do is note what I got right. So 7 erasers was right. I crossed that off. I got it. 3 calculators was right. I crossed that off. I got it. 5 rulers was right. I crossed that off. I got it. 15 writing pads was wrong. 17 highlighters was right. I crossed that off. I've got it. So I first start with my solution and I check it to the actual solution. Now it's not good enough to just go and say okay I got four out of seven. I need to understand what I didn't get and that's why it's important to cross off what you did get in the solution so you can now see what you didn't get. So I can go and say, okay, I didn't get 2, I didn't get 31, and I didn't get 59. So those are points I need to know are actual prime numbers. So in my summary of learning points, I need to go and say, 2, 31, and 59 are actually prime numbers. And what I also need to say is what I have learned here is that 15 is not a prime number. Now this is a simple one because it is just numbers. But your summary of learning points could be, I need to learn that when they say a company is listed, that brings about a risk at the financial statement level. I didn't know that before. So the things that are in the scenario that can help me to get points. So your summary of key learning points, guys, you don't want it to be too long, but you want it to put down everything you felt you learned, things that you should have known that you didn't put down, things that you never knew, now you do know, so that you take that forward with you before you do your next question. It's important to not do a whole bunch of questions and then mark them all at the end. Do a question, mark it, then move on so that you take what you learn from that question going forward. Okay guys, I hope you find this beneficial and all the best in applying this in your upcoming tests and exams.